Imagine a world where emotions like fear and joy are not just mysteries of the mind, but tools to be shaped, conditioned, and even manipulated. What if I told you that nearly a century ago, an experiment was conducted to show just how easily human emotions could be altered, leaving behind a legacy that remains controversial to this day? Welcome to the story of the Little Albert Experiment, a groundbreaking and unsettling psychological study that changed how we think about human behavior and emotions. Stick around as we unravel this tale of science, ethics, and human nature, and uncover the hidden truths behind one of psychology's most infamous experiments, the context and the big idea. To understand the Little Albert experiment, we first need to explore the world of classical conditioning. In the early 20th century, a Russian physiologist named Ivan Pavlov discovered that dogs could learn to associate a neutral stimulus, like the sound of a bell, with food, leading them to salivate at the mere sound. This groundbreaking concept, known as classical conditioning, revolutionized our understanding of learning and behavior. Inspired by Pavlov, American psychologist John B. Watson wanted to push the boundaries of this concept. Could classical conditioning work not just on animals but on humans? Could it shape emotions as fundamental as fear? This ambitious and ethically murky question led to one of the most famous and controversial experiments in psychology, the Little Albert Experiment. The experiment, conducted in 1920, the Little Albert Experiment involved John B. Watson and his assistant, Rosalie Rayner, at Johns Hopkins University. Their subject? A nine-month-old baby known to history as Little Albert, though his real identity remains a matter of debate. At the start, Little Albert was a cheerful and curious baby who showed no fear of animals or objects, such as a white rat, a rabbit, or a dog. But Watson and Rayner had a plan to change that. They introduced the white rat to Albert and, at the same time, struck a metal bar behind him to create a loud, jarring noise. Naturally, the noise frightened Albert, causing him to cry. After repeating this pairing several times, Albert began to associate the white rat with the frightening noise. Eventually, just the sight of the rat was enough to make Albert cry and try to crawl away. A clear demonstration of classical conditioning, but it didn't stop there. Albert's fear began to generalize to other similar objects. A rabbit, a dog, a fur coat, and even a Santa Claus mask with a white beard. All these things now triggered fear in little Albert. The experiment demonstrated not only that fear could be conditioned in a human, but also that such fear could spread to other stimuli with similar characteristics. The Fallout and Ethical Questions While the experiment was a scientific breakthrough, it raised significant ethical concerns, even at the time. What happened to little Albert after the experiment? Unfortunately, there's no definitive answer. Records suggest that Albert might have lived a normal life or could have experienced long-lasting psychological effects. We'll never know for sure. What is clear, however, is that Watson and Rayner did not decondition Albert's fear. They did not attempt to undo the emotional damage caused by their experiment. This glaring oversight has led many to criticize the study as deeply unethical by modern standards. Additionally, the experiment highlighted the dark side of scientific curiosity. While it provided valuable insights into human behavior, it also demonstrated the potential harm that can come when researchers prioritize discovery over the well-being of their subjects. The legacy. The Little Albert experiment remains a cornerstone of psychological education. It introduced the concept of conditioned emotional responses, influencing everything from therapy techniques to marketing strategies. Yet, it also serves as a cautionary tale a reminder of the ethical responsibilities that come with scientific inquiry. In modern psychology, ethical guidelines ensure that experiments prioritize the welfare and informed consent of participants. The Little Albert experiment's ethical failures have contributed to the development of these safeguards, ensuring that history does not repeat itself. So what can we take away from the story of Little Albert? It's a tale of innovation and ethical missteps, of scientific discovery and human cost. The experiment forced us to confront difficult questions about the balance between progress and morality. While we've learned much from this controversial study, it also reminds us 
that the pursuit of knowledge must never come at the expense of human dignity. If you found this dive into psychological history fascinating, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more thought-provoking content, and leave a comment with your thoughts on the Little Albert experiment. Was it a necessary step for science, or a case of ethics gone astray? Let's talk about it. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.